run got a couple here, second and eight. Throwing now is Tugavailoa. They're going deep for Hill. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. Every defensive staff harps on limiting explosive plays. <laughs> Job not so well done there. Yeah, they talk about it all the time. A lot harder to stop, though, isn't it? And when you think of an explosive play, most offensive staffs define them as passes of 20 or more yards and runs of 15 or more yards. They went zooming past that number there. So that changes things in a big way. Now from all the way down inside the 30, here's first and 10. Now a run straight ahead with Edmonds down at the 25. The Dolphins at 5-4 and four now on the year. And they were winners their last time out, so they'll be looking to make it two in a row. And so much about football, partner, comes down to mindset. Being in the right frame of mind in the best way, to get in that good frame of mind, winning. So they come in feeling good. They've got the home crowd behind them. I think they're going to be tough to beat in this one. Here we go. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. On play action, here's Tua. That's caught Waddle on the left side. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 17 yards is the pickup there for number 17. Boy, no problems getting down the field here on this opening drive. They've looked really sharp in the early going, and they've come up with some big plays already. Here's another that's going to set up first and goal. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door first and goal. Now again to Edmonds. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Really good stop there by the end of this 4-3 defense. And not just pass rushers anymore, are they? Those guys can use their hands, control the point of attack, shed those blockers, and go get those ball carriers. Touchdown, Dolphins! Tyreek Hill, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Dolphins are on the board first here this afternoon. Well, these guys scored touchdown after touchdown in that win a week ago. So how do they come out this week? Same way. They've got that momentum going. A touchdown on the opening drive. I think it's safe to say that they're in a great yeah. position. I mean, a lot of times we've seen where teams have scored a ton of points the week before. The very next one struggle to score points as if they used it all. Not in this case. This group appears locked in. We're going to have to make some adjustments if you're on the other side of that football. And a fair catch signal for and taken successfully. Watson and the Browns now with a first and ten at their 25-yard line. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb, and he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. That was the veteran Jamie Collins busting through to make the stop. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. To throw is Watson. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Charles already trailing by touchdown early. This offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of strike? But they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was all on the board against their defense. But they do even more so. You just want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. Throwing on third down, Watson. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't get in. Against a team coming off a win, just as your team did the previous week, 
You talk about being physical all game long. Sometimes being physical is just being on the spot and helping force the incompletion. And Bohorquez on to punt as he gets it away. And this returnable for Hill. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. So a 56-yard punt. They'll net 41 after the 15-yard return. And it'll be Dolphin football. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And they currently sit one game over 500 thanks to their victory a week ago. Yeah, Charles, they've been really an up and down team all year. Do you think that they have enough to get into the playoffs? Well, you did mention they've been up and down all year. So to me, it depends on what week you catch them. When they're at their best, I think they're definitely playoff worthy. But to me, they haven't been able to bring the intensity week in and week out. And that could be their Achilles heel. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Tua sets up to pass it. And that one going to come up short. Low throw. Well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after their last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Tua. That's going to be caught by Waddle. And they'll get him down at about the 37, well short of the first. Tua on fourth down. He'll rifle this one deep right side. And that is incomplete. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it. And that will force a turnover on downs. So they take a big, big chance here in their own territory. And you think the coach may have some questions to answer? Yeah, and, you know, normally we focus on the media, right, the social media barrage that he's going to get for this one. How about on his own sideline and in his locker room? Because I think the team's going to look at my like, coach. Why would we go for it there? I mean, no confidence in the defense. You don't like the punter. I mean, what's going on here? You owe us some explanations. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure you're back. You spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Second down, here's Chubb again. And he will cross the 30 down to the 29 yard line. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three yard gain brings up the third down. Yeah, come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Third and two, Watson. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Amari Cooper, 29 yards. And the Browns are an extra point away from drawing level. 
So it takes him just three plays here to find the end zone. And you remember, of course, this was all set up by their defense. Yeah, they got the stop on fourth down. So I imagine the offense said to their defense, thank you very much for this great starting field position. And like you said, three plays later, they're in the end zone. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And they have the game here followed by the open date on their calendar next weekend. And Charles, this is a crew that you have to think really is relishing the opportunity to be on the couch for a few days. Yeah, they certainly are. But let's face it, partner. They can't get caught looking ahead to that couch time while they're playing this one. They've got to take care of business first. Meanwhile, this one knocked down in the backfield. It's incomplete. Well, they certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. Okay. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Two are going to throw. He'll get this to his tight end, Gesicki. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Two of finding Gesicki there for a Dolphin first. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. On first down, Tonga Bailoa. He's going to float this one deep right side. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Picked off by Greg Newsom. And the Browns are going to get possession of the football as time will run out on this first quarter of play. 7 7, our score after one. The Browns drive about to get started. They got the ball now following a big play, keeping the other guys out of the end zone. Now they'll start deep in their own territory, first and ten. They begin this drive with Chubb, and they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Actually love the effort there. The ability to throw from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. From the gun, here's Watson. Man open, that's Anthony Schwartz. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Just like that, out of danger and up past the 40 now for first and ten. Pretty well stopped in his tracks. Give him a yard up to the 42. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. On 
second and nine. Watson. Oh, and that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. So many times we've seen him trying to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense, and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Here's Watson. And I think that one might have been intercepted, but he will be ruled out of bounds. So this will go only as incomplete. On fourth down, on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. Well, partner, fast forward with me for a second. Remember, next week they have the open week, so they're going to get some extended rest. Does that change how they manage the rest of this one? I think it does a little bit, but not by too much because you're right. You get the extra rest. You get a chance to heal up and kind of, you know, do a little bit of a reset for this team. But it's also seven extra days to think back to the last time you were on the field. So now a little more importance on what they're getting done because they carry it with them for essentially two weeks. Three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Looking to pass to him. He'll rifle this one deep right side. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. John Johnson with the INT. Well, those have been a problem for him all season, but never quite as much as they have in these last few minutes. Let's count it up now. A pair of picks on his team's last two drives and double-digit interceptions this season. I don't care if you're the best in the game or an undrafted rookie. You've got to take better care of the football, or you're going to cost your team chances. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Hunt will try going up the middle. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11 yard pickup. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Back to the ground. This time it's Chubb. And the running lane's non existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. And again, it's Chubb. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're not doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you get ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. York able to send this one through, and they take the lead here now at 10-7. So they get the turnover in plus territory. The drive stalls out, but still able to get three out of that. Yeah, we were able to see an offense and a defense kind of mix and match with each other, didn't we? Both of them trying to make sure that they have the upper hand and the advantage. Offense trying to get to the end zone. Defense, of course, trying to hold them to a field goal attempt. And it wasn't a guaranteed lock three from where they started. So, you know, the offense has to be happy to come away with those three points. 
And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. The Dolphins at the line, ready for their next drive. Now, they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. All right, guys, had your fun? All right, throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Two and to try again on second down. And he's got his tight end. It's Mike Gesicki. And they work this well up field across the 45. A gain there of 21 yards. Well, he's had the interception rows in this one, Charles. At that time, a little bold to throw it into double coverage, but he beat the double coverage. Yeah, but I admire that he still will challenge defenders downfield, even though the ball's been in jeopardy a few times in this game. A nice ball there against multiple defenders, and they advance it downfield. Two and now on first down. That's complete. Once again, it's Kosicki. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Give him back-to-back -back catches now. That one for 16, and another first down. Here we go. Real green. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by John Johnson. And the Browns are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20 yard line. I'm not sure that the wheels, Charles, are coming completely off, but they're shaking a little bit. That's three interceptions, and now interceptions here on back-to-back -back drives. And I think about what a Hall of Fame coach told me that he always told his teams, when a mistake happens, just move on to the next play. Let it go. Hard to do when you're throwing this many interceptions. That's exactly the attitude that has to be adopted. After the interception, here's Watson. Flushed out right. Gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit. We decided not to throw it on first down, but give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage, but it's only second and short, so that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. Looking to throw again on second down. Watson eluding the pressure right. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Well, sometimes the defense just beats you. Great coverage from the secondary. All of them in the proper position. So instead of trying to throw into tight coverage, they found a way to throw it away and come back and try to get the next down. They tried to throw on second down unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. They'll try to run for the first down with Hunt. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They run again with Hunt. 
It's a room to maneuver. And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. On first down, Watson. He'll let this go for the end zone. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked up by Xavier Howard. And the Dolphins are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. Boy, the coverage there, airtight as he comes away with the interception. Love that observation there because they were taking a shot at the end zone, but you're right about the coverage. Absolutely tremendous. And this they could clip for a training tape. Staying with him down the field, locates the football in the air, and comes away with the interception. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. With his slim deficit closing in on the end of the first half, we'll see if they can move this at least into field goal range and try to get three out of this drive. After the turnover, it's Tua. And this one is incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yes, yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Throwing again on second and ten. Tua. Yeah, the pressure gets there, and Tua is going to be taken down. Miles Garrett make that now eight sacks for him on the season. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. So now after the sack, Tua and the Dolphins staring at a third and long. Going to the air, Tonga Bailoa. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. And this one incomplete. And another throw that really could have been, maybe should have been intercepted. That would have been number four. Instead, it's fourth down. Two things you can do in that situation. Run and punt the football or try and take your shot at getting the first down. They chose the latter, but they'll have to punt all the same. Here's Thomas Morstead now. As his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. Returnable for Grant. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. The Browns drive about to get started. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Now with five seconds left, not really enough time to run another play and then stop it, so on comes the field goal unit. think this has the carry it does not it's no good and that will keep this a three-point game so that would have been something from that distance but to no avail comes up empty as we have reached the intermission as we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports halftime report Welcome back. Charles and I settled into the booth ready for quarter number three. The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. The 
Browns drive about to get started. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and ten. Back to throw, Watson. And he will find his man, Schwartz. That's complete. Pass the 20. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. I don't think you can get any more efficient or tidy, whatever word you want to use in that. And one play, 75 yards in zone. Yeah, efficient, tidy, excellent words. How about explosive? 75 yards, one play. That means everyone handled their assignment, doesn't it? It doesn't just mean that the defense broke down. They really executed the way that was drawn up on the whiteboard. Big time play, big time result. The York on now for the extra point. It's good to make it 17 7. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. Well, the opposition laid down the challenge and opening drive touchdown here to start the second half. And Charles, now you feel like this group needs to get an answer because this all of a sudden is a two-score game. Yeah, you're right about that. What was a small magical spread to overcome? A little bit more daunting now. I think you're exactly right. Pressure is on because you don't want them getting the ball back with a chance to really extend this lead out. From the 21, it's second and 10. Here's Tua. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Throwing now is Chungavailoa. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. Well, they certainly aren't letting up today, partner, because they forced big turnovers already. And it's been incredibly tough for them to get yards against, let alone put points up on the board. Damn. They're going for it. Here's Tua with it. That one brought in by his tight end, Adam Shaheen. And he will have a Dolphins first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. Fourth down, no problem. Just a ho-hum pickup of 14 to keep the offense on the field. Tug of Iloa. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. To throw on second and ten. Tua being chased out left. And that'll be incomplete. 
Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. The goal is certainly to try and make a big play happen and climb back into this game, but you have to be careful. If you overdo it, you could turn it over and hurt your team. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. Able to find Shaheen, the tight end. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 41-yard line. Tua sets up to pass it. This ball is caught by Shaheen. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. Two and now on first down. Now left to Shaheen. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Just picking up yardage and bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they can be set up with a first and goal. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. On the handoff, it's Edmonds. A good display of power, but ultimately it gets him just inside the five to the four and no further. Edmonds again. And he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. Chase Edmonds, his fifth rushing touchdown now on the year. And the Dolphins have got it back to within a score. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And the lead's down to a field goal at 17-14. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. The Browns drive about to get started. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. And we didn't even get a chance to settle in for that drive. A quick strike of 75 yards, and they find the end zone. Don't you get the sense that film study was behind this one, that they saw something that they thought they could take advantage of? The key is calling it in the right situation. Knowing when it exists to go to it, they did exactly that. They've got to feel really good about what they did in advance of this game. Just looking down at the sideline now, their defense is like, man, can you have strung that out just a few <laughs> plays? Give us a break. Back out there. Hey, man, get that water break and get on out there and play. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And we'll see a return here from the end zone. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down to those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier said go. than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. Right. 
To throw once more on second and ten. Tua. They're going deep for Hill. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked up by Denzel Ward. Charles, whatever's going on between his ears right now, it's just not completely calculated correctly. Seven picks between last week and this week after that one. And they always say the most important part of a player is those six inches between the ears. But right now, it's all those interceptions that are going on. So whoever his trusted confidant is on the sidelines, I don't know if it's the offense coordinator, the quarterback's coach, maybe the backup quarterback, that's who he needs to get with now and get himself calm. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. Even with him busting through the contact, he'll still be stopped just inside the 35. He was brought down by Nick Needham. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left in no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On second and nine, Watson. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. Throwing on third down, Watson. And he'll just get rid of it. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. York able to send this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. So they got the turnover started with great field position, but in the end, the defense able to hold firm, and they only get three out of it. And I like what you said right there. That defense able to hold firm, backed up into the shadow of their own end zone. Goalpost right behind them. They had to make sure they didn't give up the six. And boy, they came through in a big way. To them, even though they gave up three, that's a win for their side. They'll elect to bring it out here to the end zone. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. So now, Charles, this drive maybe a touch more important trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and ten all the way down at the 35. Now to it. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And it's incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. Partner, they've been aggressive airing it out all game long. And no better evidence than those last two snaps. They weren't going to beat this coverage, though. Two plays in a row. And that one falls incomplete. Third quarter from Miami. This is second and ten. Two are going to throw. And now here's another interception. And the Browns are going to take over at their own 30-yard line. Well, there's two sides to this coin. I mean, on one side, five interceptions now thrown for him. That's tough. But, man, this defense, they have been ball-hawking and impressive. But, Charles, let's flip it back over. If you're coaching a quarterback that's struggling this much at this stage of the game, do you maybe try to get him out? I would think about it, and i think about it awfully hard. But also, you might want to look into his eyes, see what he has. He might be one of those players that you don't want to affect his confidence by actually pulling him out of the game. So you have to know your player. You have to know the situation. The Browns drive about to get started. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because 
what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. Still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. We have played three quarters. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Down, it's Watson. And he's got it. What a catch on the sideline. It'll go as an impressive... no chance of turning the corner he can only get back to the line of scrimmage second and ten coming up officially nothing on that last run they'll try again second and ten Watson He's got his receiver, Cooper. And they move this all the way down to the nine. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. They'll run with Chubb. And this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. They've been in the red zone three times in this game and have not scored a single point. Can they break through here on second and goal? And able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. 90 yards rushing for him so far as his terrific season continues here. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. York able to send this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. So all things considered, that's not the final nail, but it does make things exceedingly difficult now on the other side. Yeah, because obviously now with a 16-point game, the other guys don't need just two touchdowns. They need a couple of two-point conversions as well. Plus, they'll need either a turnover or an onside kick in there somewhere. So you're just adding to the list of things that need to happen in sequence, and it's going to be a pretty tall order this late in the game. And this is going to be returned from the middle of the end zone. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. Let's go! First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. As this offense takes the field again, CD, remember last drive, they were moving the football, but then they threw that costly interception, so we'll see if they can right the ship here on this drive. And does that just sum up football? We see it all the time, don't we? The defense goes from losing the battle to making a huge play and stealing the momentum. So you know they're riding high right now, and they're ready to challenge this offense and that quarterback one more time. And we'll see if the offense is up for that challenge here as things start to get more interesting here in this second half. So a first and ten upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 36. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. I like the thought process there. They connected on a big play, and sometimes you find the defense vulnerable. So they went for the bigger shot, went for it all on that one. This time, they were ready for it. To throw again on second down. 
And that falls to the ground incomplete. Well, a nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Another throw there off the mark, and obviously he's battled all of the interceptions. Things just haven't been true to form for him. I don't know. What do you think's going on out there, CD? That's a great question, and my suspicion is he's been coached really well to not show that he's having a problem. You know, they always tell you no matter what, you keep throwing the football with confidence. Well, we're not seeing a confident thrower right now. He's off balance, the passing game's off balance, and the defense is taking advantage. Two and a throw again. They're going deep for Hill. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Tyreek Hill with his second touchdown of the game, number seven on the year. And the Dolphins get a bit closer. So this back now to a 10-point spread, and you have to imagine they'll line up and go for two. Oh, no question about it. If they can get this to an eight-point game, they can make things awfully interesting here in these last few minutes. Two are going to try and throw for it. And they're going to get the two. It's caught. So they get the conversion. And now we're going to a one score game. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. And here's Jakeem Grant from his end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Browns drive about to get started. And with that last touchdown, I mean, we're set up for a good finish here. Some things to consider, Charles. Obviously, it's a very close game here in the fourth quarter. Defensively, they've got all three timeouts in their back pocket. So the check. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked up by Javon Holland. And the Dolphins are right back in this football game. If you combine last week and this week, he's got a hat trick going because he had two interceptions a week ago. He's seeing the ball so well and understanding where receivers are, positioning. I mean, just watching him work with such great technique and paying it off by actually catching the ball when he has a chance, he's helping his team in a huge way. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and ten, just shy of midfield at the 48. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Dancing to his left. And two are going to slide to a halt, but he will have the first down. Setting the throw on first down is Tua. They'll get this to his tight end, Gasicki. And he's going to get this down near the 25. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. Here's Tungabailoa on first and ten. And that's intercepted yet again, and that could be the backbreaker. And the Browns have just about sewn up this football game. Gosh, you add up last week and this week now, that's nine interceptions in this two-game stretch, and we're not done here. It's almost as if they can't even believe their eyes. Or maybe, partner, is the confidence level in him so high that they believe he'll get out of it and make plays for them to win a game? Well, they've said they believe in him. That's being tested right here. The Browns drive about to get started. Well, they can smell victory, partner. They can see it on the horizon, but certainly we're not done yet here. Defense still has three timeouts, and obviously this is a very slim lead they're holding on to. And let's face it, the easiest way to get this done, challenge your ground game, challenge your offensive line, your tight ends, your receivers. Anyone who's going to lay down a block, don't let there be penetration because they're going to stack the line of scrimmage and maybe bring extra people to the ball. If you can do that, make them burn their timeouts, run out the clock, life will be good. But if you really want to gamble a little bit, 
a quick play action, quick throw, might be able to get it done. Just make sure it's not incomplete and stop the clock. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. Watson. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked up by Xavier Howard. Well, they were obviously backed up. Had a little bit of space from the goal line, snapping it from the three, but still trying to throw it. And yeah, exactly. But this is where hindsight is 2020 comes into play, right? Seems like a good idea to throw the ball there. Maybe you'll surprise them and catch them off guard. Instead, you've created a turnover, put your defense in a bad spot. There's a first and 10 at the 14 yard line. On the ground, it's Edmonds. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Tug of Iloa. Touchdown! Mike Gesicki from 13 yards out. And the Dolphins have a chance to tie things up as they trail by two here in the fourth. The touchdown is huge, but the focus now is on the two-point play. I don't want to say they have a cushion here, but they don't get it. They still have a chance for outside kick. Yeah, they would need some big time help, but you're right. There would be a shot, but the focus right now on that two-point conversion. And it's caught. And with it, we are tied here in the fourth. So a sensational return on special teams of foot race and others not going to lose. Now, meanwhile, while that was going on, we've got an injured player on the field. We'll get an update when we come back to Miami. The Browns drive about to get started. We have seen a lot of points here in this quarter. For us up here in the booth, it's been fun to watch. The defensive coordinators probably scratching their heads. Yeah, they're going a little bit crazy right now. But let's face it, all of our friends who play fantasy, <laughs> they're enjoying the heck out of this show because most of them are creating and getting a bunch of points. Yeah, points certainly not at a premium here. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle. Kind of scam the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. To throw, Watson. He's going to sling this deep downfield. He's got a man complete. Touchdown, Cleveland. Anthony Schwartz, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Browns strike quickly to take the lead here in the fourth. Might be seeing that one on the highlight shows tonight. The home run ball here in the fourth quarter to take the lead. There's nothing like being aggressive, preaching that to your team, and then following through all the way through. Go ahead and throw one more up there. Why not? Been a great game, and we are not done yet. Extra point by York is up and good. And they will take a seven-point lead. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. He will return this from deep in the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Okay, ready? The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. 
This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Two to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. They try to take a shot there on second down, and that leaves them because of the incompletion, a very tricky third and ten. And with the time situation, you would expect them to try and get it all on this one play, but there's still enough time that if you can take something shorter, gain some yardage, make it a more manageable fourth down if you need to. Here's Tua. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage, too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Partner, they've got one chance left to keep this one going, and I think for you and me, let's think along with their offensive coordinator now, has to think back, cycle through every play of this contest, and remember what's worked and what has it. Because right here, he needs the best play in the game in order to keep this one alive. He gets this complete to Shaheen, the tight end. Now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. And that's intercepted yet again. And that could be the backbreaker. John Johnson with the INT. Yes, folks, that is his third interception. And I'm going to use one of the most overused phrases in football. He's a ball-hawking safety. I love the way that you called for the shot there. That's perfect, though, because there is something to that. Being a safety often allows you freedom to roam around the defense, maybe not a specific assignment. Today, his assignment, find the football. And he's done so quite well. And he will find his man, Schwartz. That's complete. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. A big game there, and that should certainly be enough to put this one in the win column. When they needed a play this year, he's certainly been the guy to deliver it. As this season has gone on, he's been awfully consistent and sometimes spectacular. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Throwing now, Watson. Back of the end zone, could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. And they don't get the reception, incomplete. So now they're down to 17 seconds remaining. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. They'll give to Hunt here on the option. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up the third down. And with inside of 10 seconds, eight to be precise, we get whistles and a timeout on the field. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Watson now to throw. And this is caught. And that could seal it. It's a touchdown. So a little icing on the cake there before the clock hits all zeros. What a way to finish things off. Exactly what you want. Not much time and a touchdown to put things away. New York now for the extra point. And he's 
been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Now this will be returned from deep in the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20 to the 25-yard line. So that last touchdown sealed it there, partner, and then the kickoff there at the end, just a formality to knock the final seconds off and send everyone home. Yeah, it's awfully nice when you're kicking off late, knowing that even if you give up a big return or a touchdown, it doesn't matter, right? You mentioned the word formality. Good job by them putting themselves in that situation where kicking off did not matter. So for Cleveland, the win will move them to 7-2 and two now on the year. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to Buffalo to take on the Bills. Meanwhile, for the Dolphins, it's a loss that'll drop them back to 500 through 10 games. And they'll get a late bye next week, which might be coming at the right time. And they'll be back.